Hey everybody, here is seven steel layouts everyone needs to know before starting their steel factory. The first basic steel layout we are making takes in 120 iron ore per minute and 120 coal per minute and then produces 40 steel pipes per minute and 15 steel beams per minute and this entire layout takes around 53.4 megawatts of power to run. Start with an 8x5 platform. Put a foundry in the third column in the second row. Then put one on either side of it. Then you're going to want to add a splitter, making sure that the entrance is coming from the left side here, right underneath this hole in the foundry. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other two foundries right here. We are then going to add a Mark I line between the splitters and the foundries. Next, we are going to add the other manifold splitter line by putting down three splitters stacked up next to the one we already had. But before you put down the third splitter, make sure that the entrance is coming in from the left side then you can remove the two bottom splitters then you'll want to put a conveyor lift this could either be a mark one or mark two doesn't really matter just like this we are then going to repeat the process for the other two foundries Then put a Mark II line between the splitters, both above and below. Next, we will set the foundries to go and produce steel ingots. But on the third foundry, we are going to want to underclock it to make 30 per minute instead. Add a merger in front of the exit here from the first foundry, making sure that it's facing forward. Then we will add a splitter in front of this exit right here, followed by a merger right in front of it. Add a line between the splitter and the mergers, the mergers and the foundries. Add a Mark I belt between this splitter and this merger right here. And also again between this splitter and the merger right in the middle, just like this. Then we are going to add a constructor in front of the merger over here and over here and in front of this foundry right here. Then we are going to belt the foundries and the mergers into these constructors. For the first constructor on the left, you are going to want to set it to be producing steel beams. And then the other two will be doing steel pipes. In front of the second constructor here, add a merger in the sixth row, making sure the output is facing forward. Then add a Mark I belt between the two constructors and this merger. Then add two storage containers in the seventh row, one lining up with this constructor and the other one lining up with the merger right here. Then add a Mark I belt between the merger and this storage container and the constructor here and that storage container. All that's left now is to set up the power and connect the lines. Now this layout will allow you to stockpile some beams and pipes in order for you to start unlocking some hub upgrades such as the advanced steel production and the logistics mark three. Now you will need the logistics mark three belts for all the other layouts in this video. So I suggest you get this as quick as possible. The next two layouts are strictly to produce steel ingots. You are going to need more ingots to do more items such as the versatile frameworks or the stators and the motors. And by the way, if you're interested in seeing layouts for these items, let me know in the comments down below. This next layout takes in 270 iron ore per minute and 270 coal per minute and turns it into 270 steel ingots per minute. And the whole layout takes 96 megawatts of power to run. And the best part of this layout is that it fits inside a 4x4 section, which is not a coincidence. This is the exact size that you can fit a blueprint into. I've created two blueprints, one with just a steel layout and one with the foundations on it that you could use. And you'll be able to find these blueprints in my Discord. Start by putting a foundry down with the entrances coming down from the top. Line it up with the bottom of row one and go up two notches and making sure that the foundry is in the middle of columns two and three. Then you wanna make sure to add a foundry on either side. We're gonna repeat the process on this side. Set all the foundries to do steel ingots. 
Then we are going to add a splitter, making sure that it's in between the two first foundries and it's in the middle of rows two and three. And the entrance to that splitter is coming in from the left. Then we're gonna add splitters in between the other foundries, just like this. We're then gonna add a Mark I belt between all the splitters and the foundries. Next, just like we did in the first layout, we are going to add a splitter right next to the one that we have already. And we are going to go up three splitters, making sure that the third one, the entrance is coming in from the left side here. Then you can delete the bottom two splitters. Then we are going to add a conveyor lift. This could be Mark one or Mark two. Doesn't really matter between that splitter and the corresponding foundries. We are going to repeat the same process for the other four foundries. On top of these lower splitters, we are going to go up three mergers. One, two, three. And making sure that the output to that merger is facing on the right side. Then we're going to go ahead and delete the two mergers that were in the middle. We are going to repeat the process with the other two lower splitters. Now on the top splitters, these three right here, we're going to add a merger right on top. Making sure again that the output to those mergers are facing to the right. Then we're going to add a Mark III belt between all of the top mergers. We are also going to add a Mark III belt between the splitters on the bottom. And we will do the same thing with the splitters in the middle. Next, we are going to add a conveyor lift, doesn't matter which speed, to each one of these foundries. And we're going to line it up with the mergers here at the top. Then we're going to add a Mark I belt between the conveyor lifts and the mergers. And we're going to repeat that process for each one of these. All that's left now is to set up the power and connect the lines. And once completed, this is what it should look like. This next layout takes in 120 iron ore per minute and 120 coal per minute and turns it into 180 steel ingots per minute. And it only requires 64 megawatts of power to fully run. The only thing is that it requires the alternate recipe for steel ingots, the solid steel ingot. So your typical steel ingot recipe takes 45 iron ore and coal and converts it into 45 steel ingots. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. But this solid steel ingot takes in 40 iron ingots and 40 coal and converts it into 60 steel ingots. So that's a 50% increase. The only difference is you have to smelt your iron ore into ingots before you send them into the foundry. But this extra work is well worth the increase to the steel. For this layout, you'll start with an 8x4 platform. Start by putting four smelters, one in each column, all in the second row. Then put in your manifold splitter line in the first row, making sure that the entrance to the splitters are in the left side. Then add Mark 1 lines between the splitters and the smelters, and then add Mark 2 lines between all the splitters. Set all of these to create iron ingots. Then add a merger line in row three, making sure that the last merger is facing forward. Then add Mark one lines between all the smelters and the mergers. And then a Mark two line between the mergers themselves. Next, we'll add a splitter in front of this merger right here and making sure that the entrance is on the bottom and we'll do it so that it's just about right at the start of the fourth row. Then we'll add a Mark II belt between the merger and the splitter. Then we will add a foundry to the fifth row, lining up the second hole to that splitter. 
Then we'll add two more foundries to the left side of this foundry. Then we will add two more splitters, one in front of each one of those foundries, making sure the entrance is to the right. And we'll add Mark II belts between the splitters. And Mark I belts between the uh, splitters and the foundries themselves. Now we will add two more splitters on top of each one of these splitters, making sure that the, the top one here, the entrance is to the right. And we'll delete the middle one. And then we'll add some conveyor lifts to all the foundries and make sure that the lifts is aiming to the right side. And then we'll add Mark 1 belts between the splitters and the lifts themselves. Just like this. And we'll repeat the same process for the other two foundries. We'll also add Mark 2 belts between the splitters at the top. Next, we will set these foundries to do solid steel ingots. And then we'll add a merger in front of, in the sixth row here, in front of the hole of this foundry in the middle making sure the output is going forward. Then we'll add Mark I belts between all the foundries and the merger. And finally, we'll add a storage here and add a Mark III belt between the merger and the storage. All that's left now is to connect the power and connect the nodes. So we connect the iron belt over here at the start and the coal connects right here by the foundries. If you enjoyed this video so far, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to get more guides for Satisfactory. It really helps the channel a lot and I really do appreciate it. The next layouts are exactly the same start as the previous layout. The only difference is that we change what we do after the foundries and we extend the platform down to 11 rows. This next layout is an improvement on the first layout, but it also requires the solid steel ingot alternate recipe. It takes in 120 iron ore per minute and 120 coal per minute, and it turns it into 40 steel pipes per minute and 30 steel beams per minute. And the whole layout takes 80 megawatts of power to run. We can add a merger in front of the second foundry, making sure that the output to that merger is facing to the right and then one in front of the last foundry with the output facing forward. Then we could add a Mark I belt between all the foundries and the mergers. Then we'll add a Mark II belt between the two mergers over here. And then we will add a splitter in front of the merger right here and add a Mark III belt between the merger and the splitter. Then we'll add a splitter in each column of the seventh row and make sure that we run mark twos in between all the splitters then we will add a constructor in each column of the eighth row and add mark one belts between all the splitters and the constructors the first two constructors are going to be doing steel pipes and the last two are going to do steel beams. We then add a merger in front of the second constructor, making sure the output is facing forward. And the third constructor, making sure that the output is facing forward. Then we want to add Mark 1 belts between all the constructors and the mergers. And finally, we want to add a container in front of both mergers right here and belt using Mark 1 belts. All that's left to do now is add power. And there you have it. Now we are creating 40 steel pipes a minute and 30 steel beams a minute. You could alternatively also, instead of doing steel pipes and steel beams, you could just do 120 steel pipes per minute. And this layout would take 88 megawatts of power to run. As you can see here, I've extended the platform by two more columns and we are just doing six constructors worth of steel pipes in order to create a total of 120 steel pipes a minute. And alternatively, instead of the steel pipes, you could also just do the steel beams and you'll be able to produce 45 steel beams per minute. And this layout would only take 76 megawatts of power to run. And in this version, all I'm doing is three constructors at the end and each one of them does 15 steel beams a minute. And so we are creating 45 steel beams per minute instead of the pipes and beams. So it all depends on what you need at the moment and what you want to be doing. But these are all different options that you can do. 
For the final layout, we are taking in 225 limestone per minute, 240 iron ore per minute, and 240 coal per minute, and we're turning it into 15 encased industrial beams per minute. And the whole layout takes 161.4 megawatts of power to run. For this one, start with a 10 by 8 platform. Start by adding a foundry in the middle of the first and second column in the second row. Then add five more for a total of six foundries. Then we will add our double manifold lines. We will do like all the other layouts that we've done so far. Add a splitter in front of the first entrance of the foundries and put Mark 1 belts between all the splitters and the foundries. Next, we'll do the manifold that is at the top. We will want to do three splitters. The third one, making sure the entrance is coming from the left side here. Then we're gonna delete the two underneath it. Then we'll add a conveyor lift between the splitter here and the foundry. And we'll repeat this for all the other foundries. Then we will add a Mark III line between all of the splitters. And we will do that on the bottom also. In front of the first five foundries, we are going to add a merger, making sure that it's facing to the left side. Then we will add Mark I belts between all of the foundries, including the last one, and the mergers. And then we will add Mark III belts between all of the mergers. Then we are going to add a splitter in the fourth row and the first four columns. And in front of that, in the fifth row, we are going to add some constructors for a total of four constructors. Next, run a Mark III line between this merger and this splitter right here. Add Mark I lines between all the splitters and the constructors, following by Mark III lines between all the splitters. Then we are going to set these constructors to do steel beams. Next, in the seventh column between rows four and eight, we are going to add five constructors. Behind those constructors in the eighth column, we want to add a splitter manifold. Followed by Mark 1 belts between all of the splitters and the constructors. And then we'll add our Mark 3 belts between all the splitters. We are going to set all these constructors to do concrete. Then we will add mergers in front of the second constructor here, making sure the output is facing to the right, and the third, and the fourth. But the fourth one, we want to make sure the output is going straight. Then we will add Mark 1 belts between all the constructors and the mergers. You could also add Mark 1 belts between all of the mergers. Now in front of these constructors of the steel beams, in row 6, we want to add some mergers. The first one will be facing forward on the output and all the other ones will be facing left. We then want to put Mark 1 belt between the constructors and the mergers. In the seventh row, in column five, just at the beginning in the center here of column five, we will put a splitter. Then we'll put one between three and four, right in the middle like that. And then the last one will be at the end of column two, right in the middle, just like this. We can then put a Mark II line between this merger and this splitter. Next, we will add the three assemblers. Make sure that the bottom of the assembler is starting at the row eight and that it's lined up with the splitters. Then add a Mark I line between the splitters and the assemblers, just like this. Next, we will create our manifold for the beams coming this way. This one will be up high, so we are going to do like we've done for all the other ones and add three splitters. The third one, making sure that the entrance is coming from the left side here. Then we're gonna delete the bottom two and add a lift. 
And we're going to repeat that for the other two assemblers. Then we can add a Mark 1 line between all of the top splitters. Here we'll add a Mark 1 conveyor lift next to this merger right here, facing this way. And then we'll add a Mark 1 line between the lift and this first splitter right here. And then finally, we can add the Mark 1 lines between the splitters on the bottom. Make sure to set the assemblers to do encase industrial beam. And the, f the last one should be set to do 50%. Then all we have to do is add a storage container and two mergers in front of the assemblers. Add some Mark 1 lines between the assemblers and the mergers and going into the storage. Then we just need to add power and the lines and then we're done. And now that you're well on your way to making steel products, you're probably going to unlock the blueprint milestone soon, in which case you'll want to know how that works. And I have a video for you on exactly that right here.